Fela Kuti has always been acknowledged as the founder of Afrobeat and one of the most popular African musicians that we've seen in the last hundred years. And as I started to dig into his history and really learn about how he came about creating a whole genre of music that what I feel is impacting the culture globally now. You start to learn how connected the diaspora and black communities all over the world are and how influences from other places really helped him hone his sound and start to create Afrobeat as we knew it when he came out. Fela Kuti was born in 1938 to a family of scholars and politicians. So he was obviously around a well-educated family that did their best to try and set him on whatever path they thought was right. And that ended up being sending him to London for school. He said in multiple interviews that when he got there, that was the first time he sort of realized what it was like to be African. It was in England, I started to feel the, the awareness of having to be an African because for the first time I came to England, I started to feel, oh, wow. So these uh, white people don't, don't like, like us too much. You know, this is my experience from having to rent rooms, you know. I, I had so much, you, at that time you read the newspapers in England, um, house for rent no colors, no dogs, and all this. That annoyed me a lot. And I met many students, you know, so at my, my student days in England, I started to be aware of having to be an African. But we had nothing to offer as Africans because we were all just taught English. And when I listen to that, it's pretty evident that just being in an area where everybody's black and everybody's sort of to what you would call maybe not equal, but they see each other, they're on the same level. And when he gets there, he realized how much of a stigma there was around black people in white areas. And that was his first like coming to self moment of reali realizing he was African, which was interesting to say it that way because you wouldn't, you wouldn't think about it like that. Years later, after he's already making music and he's playing with his band, him and his band decided to go to Los Angeles in 1969 for 10 months to record a new album. Over there is where he encountered the Black Panther Party. He met some people in there who gave him some books to read and some things to go off of. And there was a very interesting quote that he said that I think speaks to how the Black experience is more alike than we would like it to be and how connected we really are. For the first time, I saw the essence of Blackism, Black nationalism. It's crazy. In the States, people think the Black Power Movement drew inspiration from Africa. All these Americans come over here looking for awareness. They don't realize they're the ones who've got it over there. Why we're even ashamed to go around in national dress until we saw pictures of blacks wearing dashikis on 121st Street. I started thinking, I saw how everything works there. Everything functions. I saw how great America is. Realize that to be a great man, you had to have a great country behind you. I had no country. Just a bunch of Africans running around in suits trying to be Englishmen. I decided to come back and try and make my country African. That last statement to me is so profound. I came back and tried to make my country African. He realized that there wasn't a sense of nationalism in his country, which is why he went on to name the genre of music that he went on to perform, Afrobeat. He used to say that he wanted to unify the the. At first he wanted to unify his country and then he thought broader and he wanted to unify Africa. So that's why he named the music that he made Afrobeat. And it took influence from that trip to Los Angeles in America. So when you think about how tied everything is, like everybody likes to take claim over what they founded or what they originated. Afrobeat was founded in Africa, but was influenced by Los Angeles and England and in London. And I think when you think less about where it's from and you also acknowledge what the influences were to that thing, you start to see how connected we are and how similar things take on with influences in other places around the world. And that's what I hope to do with this channel. Just help keep connecting the dots in ways like this. If you're looking for more black stories around the diaspora, follow for more.